Hey everybody, it's Julie, Kansas City Girl in the Colorado World. We're doing car tube again. You guys actually really liked um, car tube, floss tube in my car, whatever you want to call it. You guys liked it last time. Um, so here we go again because once again, filming at home not happening anytime soon and um, I didn't want to go as long between videos um, again so I do apologize though because I don't like the angle um, but I can't set my phone up anywhere else so like sorry about this steering wheel situation and um, garage opener and whatever else is going on up there um, but you can still see, like, you should be able to see what's going on. So, um, this is floss tube number 41, and I keep trying to look over here where I think the camera should be. It's over here. Um, I'll try to do better. Um, today is Tuesday, May 21st, and I am off of work, but, um, can't film at home right now which we don't need to get into it I just can't so um, I'm in my car in like a parking lot not at work um, so Lottie don't worry I'm not gonna get in trouble for missing work or whatever and I was fine last video too I made it back in plenty of time before my lunch break was over it was fine everything was okay um, so I don't think this one will be very long because I don't have that much going on I was tempted to tell you guys that I had no haul, but that's not really true. Um, I bought the back issues to Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Magazine. I had a, I subscribed to that like a little less than a year ago and it included all of the 2017 back issues. And um, I'd been meaning to buy the 2015 and 2017 back issues and I just haven't like gotten around to it and so I finally did that but I'm not going to show it to you because it's online it's um I bought the digital issues so I was tempted to just say hey no haul aren't, aren't you so proud but I that's a lie so I have to fess up and be honest um it's a really super good deal though if you want to like go to their website um primitive no punch needle and primitive stitcher magazine you should subscribe to it um, it's it's very reasonable cost for the quality of patterns that you get um, especially if you like the more prim style and um, they frequently have patterns by the primitive hair sub rosa um, knickies there's some of course some other ones I'm not thinking of right now but um, like really good designers and good patterns it's a really good deal you can also get the print version of the magazine at Barnes and Noble, um, but if you get the digital, then you can get like all you can get the back issues, and they're a reasonable price. Um, I am not affiliated; just a fan, just a fan. So let me talk to you guys about what I've been doing for Mania. I think I told you in my last video that Diana from It Is Kismet Stitches on Flosstube and Instagram um, had helped me kind of settle um, on a Stitch Mania plan because I just couldn't like make a decision. And so what I decided was um, Clouds Factory Fabulous Women in History Stitch Along. It was a 2017 Stitch Along. It started like January 1st and ran the whole year. That is my oldest whip um, of my long list of whips is the oldest one so and I've been meaning to get back to it um I loved that sow I kept up with that sow for the first four months and then um the designer Ambra um Clouds Factory she like posted somewhere like hey I'm gonna make more ladies like alternate ladies and I was like oh wait hold on what and I, and then I like stopped keeping up with the sal because I was like, well, like I might want to substitute some of these ladies out with other ones and 
like I'm okay I'm just gonna stop I'm gonna wait I'm gonna see what she comes out with so that got just kind of put on hold and then it took her like a really long time to like release some of the alternate ladies so you know whatever it was it was kind of like tucked away in a drawer and then um she did she she released four and then she finally released four more like in January of this year and so I was like yeah I want to get back to that it's my oldest whip I really love that whip I like I want to I want to get back to it so what I had talked about with Diana um, was like, hey, maybe what I'll do is every, I had, um, I think I had 10 ladies, actually, let me count. I had 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh, I had 13 and a half of the 24 ladies stitched, but I needed to rip out Coco Chanel, which I did. Um, so then that made it 12 and a half. And I was like, I know what I'll do. Every time I finish a lady, I can have a new start. That's my mania plan. Stitch on this, finish a lady, go start something. Um, and so I, I started working on it. And then I realized like these ladies actually aren't taking as long as I thought they would. I think I'm just a better, faster stitcher now. Um, when I started this in 2017, it was like my third ever cross stitch project and it was my first project on linen that wasn't on Ada and so I think I was just slower um and I remember each lady taking like a week and now they take me like a maybe two days maybe three so anyway so I was kind of flying through them and then I was like god I don't actually want like 12 new starts that's crazy so I decided um I would do like more like stitch two ladies and have a new start but you know there's no rules it's just like whatever I feel like and I'm like if I if I stitch one lady and I'm like dying to go start something I will but I'm I'm having a blast stitching on these so I actually sometimes don't even want to put it down after I finish two ladies I'm like I want to keep working on it so um I'm making really good progress and I think I mean it's May 24 first but I think I could come close to a finish I guess I won't finish it in 10 days uh, I mean I mm, no but it's gonna be I, I'm gonna be really so close to finished um, and I'm gonna push I'm not putting this away until it's done because I'm that close so let me show you what the overall pattern looks like just so you guys know before I show you my piece um, I have marked on this a little bit, so I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but here's like the layout. I've kind of marked like where I'm taking people out and subbing. So the fun thing about this pattern is that um, it includes women of color. It includes like women from as far back as Cleopatra to women who are still alive, like Malala. Um, but this, this pattern is controversial. I mean, if you, if you look on, um, some of the posts on Facebook about substitutions, um, th there's some controversy and I, and it's, it makes sense, right? Like you're not going to please everybody. Everybody is not going to agree. Um, I, I removed Coco Chanel because I found out some things about Coco Chanel, mainly that she was a Nazi sympathizer and supporter. And I was like, no, I don't want her on my, on my pattern. Um, and a lot of people, um, ripped her out or just never stitched her to begin with. Um, I am not mad at the designer about that. Like, I think maybe she didn't know. And Coco Chanel is an icon and she was one of the first, the first section that was released was Eleanor Roosevelt and Coco Chanel. So I stitched it right up and then later found out and was like, I, I, I'm not comfortable. I'm not comfortable with that, but I'm not mad at the designer. Like, and I think it was a, a learning opportunity, um, for me and probably for a bunch of other people. But, um, that was probably like the most controversial figure that was included, but there, there are others that people have not been happy about and have been vocal about. You're not going to make everybody happy. And I think it's like, 
a fabulous pattern and I super duper appreciate it. And I don't want the designer to like, I don't know if she would ever watch my floss tube, but like, I don't want her to think like, you know, her pattern wasn't good enough, but I did make substitutions for various reasons. Um, including like, I just really like this person and I want her on my pattern and um, this other one I don't care about as much she can go. Um, others like just straight up like I don't want her on my pattern or I just you know like I said a lot of them I just really wanted someone else so I um, I did buy some of her alternate ladies um, that I wanted but then I did leave um, I, I'm going to have to design my own I think two or three um, I'm going to have to get creative and not be able to use her designs but that's okay that's fine um the design's simple enough that like you can totally customize it and um there was something else i wanted to say about this and i can't remember what it was so let me just show you so let me show you like this is i'm gonna fold this to like show you what i already had done um first I, I had done already the top row. This is Women Are the Real Architects of Society. These are all my lovely ladies. It's really hard to see what I'm doing. That's Harriet Tubman at the end, love. So again, like there was controversy like Harriet Tubman, Underground Railroad. The Underground Railroad wasn't actually a railroad. So, like, people were kind of, like, nagging on the designer, like, really? A railroad? Like, that's not, that's too literal. But, like, I'm not mad about it. And that's a really cute design. So, um, I already had those. And then the second row, I had Marie Curie done. I had Virginia Woolf. Um, this is where Coco Chanel was. I ripped her out and replaced her with Florence Nightingale. That was an alternate pattern that I bought from the designer. Um, that is not chronological. These are all like chronological. Let me show you what it looks like overall. Um, these are chronological, uh, but I, I really wanted to include Florence Nightingale. I'm a nurse. I wanted her on the pattern and I wasn't going to come up here and rip. I think she needed to be like around this section I wasn't gonna I didn't want to rip any of these ladies out so so that's the only one that's not in order but I don't think anybody's gonna notice really all right then I have uh, Eleanor Roosevelt uh, Amelia Earhart and then I had Frida Kahlo almost done like she was almost done now she's done um, and then I added Josephine Baker and then Rosa Parks was in the original pattern so I took someone out here and put Josephine Baker in Some people just pulled up next to me and they probably think I am nuts right now. Not only am I talking to myself, but like I'm holding patterns up, right? So, you know, they're like, what is happening over there? But I mean, I don't care that much. Okay, they're gone now. So uh, they're literally pulling away. They're probably like, she's crazy. Let's park somewhere else. Um, look at Josephine Baker. Love. That was another alternate lady that the designer put out. I did had to, I had to, um, to make it fit. I had to take off some of like, there was like a castle or something. I had to take it off. Isn't she cute? And then Rosa was part of the original pattern. Okay. So those, so, so far only two substitutions, Florence Nightingale, Josephine Baker. And then, um, the third and final row Eva Peron, Evita, and then what's next? You shall see. Maybe next video we'll, we'll, you'll see. Um, I ran out of the 822 for the banner, this, um, beigey color. I ran out of that. So this one's not actually done because I'm going to go get some 822 after this and then, um, finish her banner and then she'll be done. But, you know, good enough. I, I, I got a new start after that, okay? I earned it. So, what else did I work on? Oh, 
So I, my last video was like maybe two weeks ago, maybe three. It, it snowed after that. So I did work on Snow Queen one day. And then I thought, all right, Snow Queen, it's been real. It's been fun. We've gotten a lot of time together this past winter because it snowed a lot. Um, but, you know, it's mid-May and I think our time has come to an end. And I think we're done until, uh, you know, probably November. And maybe October. I think it sometimes we'll get, yeah, we get some snow in October here. So anyway, I thought, I thought Snow Queen and I were done, but it snowed last night and this morning. It started snowing at like 9.30 p.m. or something like that last night. Snowed all night. Yes, it's May 21st. Uh, it snowed all night. Woke up to like probably four inches of snow. However, it's too warm for it to stick around. It's already almost gone. Like there's just little patches now. Um, but it was gorgeous when we woke up. So I'm going to work on Snow Queen tonight. So she gets one last hurrah. Um, but when I did work on her a couple of weeks ago, I finished her skin, her one over one skin. So here she is in all her glory. She is so beautiful and you all love her. I converted her hair. She is, um, let me show you the original pattern. She's a blonde. I made her a redhead. In last video, several of you asked me for that conversion and I did post it in the description box of my last video. So if anybody wants this redhead conversion, um, go to floss tube number 40 and it's in the description box. And I said, you know, what it called for what I used. So that is out there for any, I think like three people asked me about it. If anyone's watching this in the future and they're like, oh my God, I love it. Go to floss tube number 40 and read the description box and the conversion is there. Um, but I did, I, I finished her over one skin. I've got a little bit left of this hair here. And then I am done with like that whole half. And then I just need to like finish her dress, which is really long. The dress is like, um, the dress is going to be like, ooh, like all the way over here. So there's more to it probably than it looks like, but, um, I haven't done any beading or backstitching. There's some backstitching like on her skin and stuff, but isn't it pretty? The fabric is hand dyed by Stephanie, 32 count polywog princess, and I love it. And you guys love it and everybody loves it because it's gorgeous. I mean, look at this fabric. It's so pretty. Oh, Snow Queen. So I get to play with her again tonight. So that is going to be like um, a detour from my mania plans because my mania is fabulous women and new starts. And Snow Queen, I'm, I'm making an exception. One day, whatever. I'm making an exception. I'm stitching Snow Queen. Um, and then we're, the weather is very unpredictable here in the front range. Um, I'm in Boulder, which is right in front of the Rockies. It's called the foothills. They're mountains, but they're not like the biggest mountains. So they're called the foothills, but they're mountains. Um, anyway, the weather system like coming out of the mountains is really unpredictable. So they very often get the weather really wrong here and that was like a huge adjustment to living in Colorado for me um, because in Kansas City they get the weather right because they can see it coming a mile away I guess I don't know um, but the weather is very accurate there but here every time it snows it's like are we gonna get one inch or 12 inches we're not sure it all depends on you know how the storm comes down off the mountains and Boulder is like nestled in the mountains um, so anyway, all of that to say, today is Tuesday, it snowed Monday night into Tuesday morning, um, and there, when I looked at the weather app, there was a little snowflake symbol on Thursday. I'm guessing it'll just be like a little bit of spitting flurries or something, but 
looks like we I'm all that to say snow queen tonight maybe snow queen Thursday too so you might see two days of progress next time I show her so um all right so my fabulous women so I finished Frida Kahlo and then I did Rosa Parks and Josephine Baker no sorry I finished Frida and then I did Florence Nightingale and then I did um, Rosa Parks and so I had finished two and a half ladies so I earned a new start so what did I do you know I had lots of options but um, this one was really like tickling my fancy this is Al Forest embroidery Emerald City uh, stitch along it's free it's a free pattern it's gonna be big um, this is just the first three parts it's a big uh, square so it's this, it's this wide, but it's going to be this tall too. Um, from what you can guess from the pattern um, preview, which is just like a blurred out like abstract, it looks like it's going to be like Oz, like green, like the palace here. And then like these scenes kind of like around it with like Emerald City in the middle. I'm really excited. It's following like the traditional the Wizard of Oz books, not the movie. And um, so part one is, um, so that's part one showing there. Just Dorothy, her house, the tornado. So I, um, <clears throat> my new start was this and I finished part one. And I'm stitching this on <clears throat> a 36 count Zweigart called Meadow Mist. Um, it's getting kind of blown out. It's a nice like aqua minty, minty aqua color. The, this was fabric I had in my stash because I started my Chatelaine Alpine Garden on here and I haven't even picked it out yet. Um, and I didn't like it. It's too crowded. So I need to go get new fabric in a smaller count and uh, restart that chatelaine and I didn't get very far it was only one day of stitching on there but I've got this huge <laughs> piece of linen so even after I finish that sampler which is quite sizable I'm gonna have tons of uh, linen left so anyway here is part one it's done I used none of the called four flosses I just grabbed anything in my collection that made sense and that included a mishmash of things such as Anchor, Gentle Arts, Ships Manor, just random stuff. No rhyme or reason, just whatever looked like the right color. And although it made me a little sad, I made Dorothy's shoes silver like they are in the book. Um, and I used a sparkly Krynik. I just don't know if we're going to get a focus here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see the sparkle. I have my camera um, front facing, which means I lose some quality. But it's the only way I can see what the heck I'm doing. Because... Um, I don't have like a mirror set up in here. So anyway, I made it sparkly. Trust me, it's sparkly. So there it is. I really, it's fun to stitch and it's, the patterns aren't too complex. It took me like three days. And um, I unfortunately won't be able to get to part two and three right away because of my mania plans, but hopefully I will get back to that and work on it some more. All right, and then I have one more whip. So only four whips this video, but um, lots to ramble about regardless. Um, so I went back to fa Fabulous Women and I finished Josephine Baker and Evita Perone and it was time for a new start. And I, this is so exciting. Um, I had a basket full of things that are ready to start. Kitted up projects like literally like fabric and floss and pattern in a bag ready to grab and start immediately. And I was like, yes, like here we go. And then I couldn't decide what to start. I was like paralyzed. 
And um, so I posted on Instagram, I think this was Sunday night, and I was like, hey, what do you guys think I should start next? Like, I'm gonna go eat dinner, and then I'm grabbing one of these. So you got like an hour to vote. Well, and I also took a really, like, it was a really crappy picture of my options. Like, I spread them out on the floor and took a crappy picture. And so, some of them didn't get very many votes, but I don't think it's because you guys don't like the project. I think it's because you couldn't see the project. So, I mean, that's what I'm going to tell myself. I don't think it's because, like, you hate, like, the projects I picked. <laughs> I really don't. Um, so let me, let me tell you guys, I, I went through my Instagram and I tallied up all the votes and I said, Hey guys, even if it's, you see this late, like still vote because then the next time I'm going to start something, uh, I'll just pick like the runner up or whatever, you know? So you guys voted. Um, now the ultimate winner was not what I ended up starting because when we were like an hour in to the voting, um, one was ahead and that's what I started. But when all was said and done, that wasn't the winner, if that makes sense. It was the runner up. So I'm trying to think like, so let me show you, I brought them all with me. So let me show you like what the options were and how the votes shook out. So there were two projects that only got two votes each. And like I said, I think it's maybe just because you guys couldn't see them very well. I don't think it's because like people didn't like them. The other thing I'll say is you guys were really nice and you like tended, a lot of you voted for like the smaller projects. I think you guys were like, oh, like that's doable. Like I'm not going to vote for the humongous sampler that you'll never finish. Like if I vote for this small one, maybe I'll see a finish sometime in my life. <laughs> so this was by far the biggest project, but it was also hard to see. Um, but it only got two votes. It's the Scarlet House Seven Sheet Sampler. And like I said, only two votes, but I mean, look, it's dark. It's hard to see in general. And then in my crappy picture, it was really hard to see. So, I mean, I get it why you guys didn't vote for it. I still love it. And then the next project that only got two votes, again, was difficult to see on the picture. And it's Jardin Privé Marquise. Only two votes. But after that, like the votes picked up a little bit. Um... Well, that's not okay. Never mind. I lied. Two more got two more projects that got low votes, but then like the votes started to swing. So, um, three votes was Minerva A Lift by Needlework Press, and I was a little disappointed actually that this only got three votes. Oh, someone else just pulled up next to me. Be cool, guys. Be cool. I actually am thirsty, so like it's not that weird that I'm taking a drink break. There they go. Okay. Everybody be calm. So, Minerva A. Lift, she only got three votes, you guys. That made me sad. And this one will be so fast to stitch. I mean, it's not very big. And then four votes was Susan B. Anthony Sampler by Stone Street Stitchworks. This is a new pattern. It's kind of, it's super patriotic. Fun fact, Floss Tube. Today is May 21st, 2019. 100 years ago, May 21st. 1919, um, the House passed uh, the right for women to vote, but, so like the bill passed, or the resolute, like whatever you want to call it, the resolution, I think it was the resolution, um, it passed 100 years ago, however, it was not ratified into the Constitution until 2020. And so that's why the centennial 
is next year, not this year, but it's still an important holiday and a big deal. There's a dog barking somewhere. So anyway, 100 years ago. Okay, <clears throat> so then the votes jump up. Okay, so that, that one got four votes. Okay, so then the next runner-up with 10 votes was... Scarlet House American Farmhouse. I love this one. It's patriotic. It's summer. I kind of want to start it right now, even though it didn't win. Hmm. Okay, and then after that, we had with 14 votes, Plum Street Samplers, Mrs. Bing, Miss not Mrs. Miss Bingley's Library with 14 votes. Love that one too. I love all of these, right? That's why I couldn't pick which one to start. I was crippled. Okay. Three left. So tying for second place. Sunflower Farm by Kathy Barrick with 20 votes. Betsy, Bird Stitcher, Colorado. Go look at her Instagram. She just, like, she almost finished the house. I mean, she basically finished the house, but maybe, like, needs to do a little detail. And she just finished the bird. And then Diana, it is Kismet Stitches, is also working on this and I think is even further than Betsy and every time they both when they post it I want to go work on it so bad so 20 votes for that and then also with 20 votes we had Stone Street Stitch Works Book House but the winner and I am not remotely surprised. The winner with 28 votes. Yes, eight more votes than the runner-up. Was the Belle of the Nashville Ball. The Blue Flower Quilting Bee. None of us can get enough of this, pro of this pattern. It took Nashville Market by storm. We're all still obsessed with it. And you all really want me to stitch this. And I had a feeling this was going to win. So I was not surprised. Here's the thing. I didn't start this one because, like I said, although this ultimately won, when I was fine, when I was ready to go sit down and stitch, um, and it had only been like an hour, um, that one did not have the most votes at that point. So what did I start? What did I stitch? The winner that wasn't really the winner was Bookhouse, Stone Street, Stitchworks. And this is the smallest project by far. So I think a lot of you voted for this one because it's cool, it's new, but also because maybe you guys were like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go easy on her. She might be able to actually finish that sometime. Now fun story. I changed everything about that pattern. Um, I'm stitching it on a funny, funny color fabric. Um, I'm stitching on it, stitching it on X Jude design, um, dark desert, which is like an orangey terracotta fabric. And I changed out a lot of the, the colors. Um, I'm not using any of the called for colors, but like the house, I picked pretty much the same colors. Um, but the books, these are books, these little starbursts. I'm picking, I, I went totally like different with the colors. And um, so here is like two days of stitching and I got a lot done and I'm really loving it. Put something behind there, geez. So totally different colors with the books. Um, I know I jumped all over the place on this, but it's because I wanted to make sure my colors were going to work. 
Um, and so that's why I went and like stitched a few random books and then stitched a few words. Like I started with the house and I knew that was going to be fine, that blue, but I wanted to make sure my books were going to work. You know, I wasn't sure it was all going to go together, but the more I look at it, especially if I walk away a little bit and come back, I really like it. It's not necessarily my colors, but I really like it. I mean, by colors, I mean maybe not colors I would always gravitate towards. Um, but I'm digging it. And I just think if I could have a few more days on this, I can finish it. I'm really... I, these books stitch up really fast. The house took forever, of course, but, like, I'm... I still have to fill in all those windows, but I'm getting there. And then the words won't take long at all, so... A few more days that we could get somewhere with this. But I gotta get back to Fabulous Women. So, that is everything I've worked on. Um... All of those are potential, like the, the runners up I just showed you are like potential new starts, but I guess um, in the spirit of me putting the question out to you guys, my next start has to be Quilting B. Like it, it won and mm, so next start will be Quilting B. But after that, hmm, hmm. Who knows? Who knows? Now, before I go, I do want to show you some future plans. Um, obviously, all of those kitted up projects I just showed you are future plans. But I wanted to show you just a couple other things. First of all, I showed this pattern in my last video. It's a dimensions pattern. It's called the Enchanter. And I got it at my crafty thrift store. And I was like, I thought it was really pretty. I picked it up. I would never stitch it. I'm going to do a giveaway on the Stitcher's Coven is what, I, is what I told you guys. But then I started looking at it and looking at it. And I was like, I actually kind of love this. Um, so I think I'm going to stitch this, you guys. There's no way this picture does it justice with all the metallics and beads and everything. There's no way it does it justice. So I think I lied and I am not giving this away. I'm going to stitch it. It's a good size project. It is 168 wide by 250 tall. However, all of this black is, that's the Ada. That's not stitches. So all that stitch, these aren't even stitches. These are like sequins. Um, so all that's stitched at the top is like that. And like this, you know, so it's not really full coverage until you get to this half. And even then, a lot of these are half stitches as Dimensions likes to do. So it's not to say it's a light project or to discount like the work that it would take. But it's, um, it's not, it's not insurmountable. And so the more I looked at it, I was like, this isn't that much work. It's a lot of work, but it's not too crazy. And then I just kept looking at it and I'm like, it's really pretty. And I think with like metallic gold and stuff, like in person, it would be insane. I think I'm going to stitch it. Next time I go to the, um, my needle workshop, which is called a stitching shop and it's in Denver. I'm hoping I'll be able to go the last Sunday this month, which will be this Sunday for stitching. I'm not promising. I'm hoping. Um, anyway, I want to pick out fabric for this. And what I have in my head is like a dark navy purple, like picture this plus gothic or something, but with sparkles. I think I'm going to get like crystal fabric. I'll see what else she has. She usually has some hand dyed by Stephanie's too. But she always has an amazing assortment of Picture This Plus. So I'm going to see what she's got. I think, I think that's what I'm going to do. And then the one last project I want to show you guys and I need your advice. I'm going to do the Prairie Schooler Prairie Year Rounds. 
and I'm going to just do, they're, they're super small. They're like 50 by 50 and I'm going to do them each month. And so I'm either going to start in June, which is this one or in July, maybe whatever I'm going to do them. I have picked out fabric. I love the look of them on the dark fabric, but I'm going to do, this is week's dye. This is an unnamed, it's a mystery week. I'm almost hundred percent sure it's a week's. I think it's beige. No straw. I think it's straw. Beige is lighter. So I'm going to do them on this with the called for colors and you know I might have to make adjustments like if this hand is like too close to the beige color you know we'll see but here's where I'm stuck I was thinking what I would do instead of doing them separate is just do a all on one piece um it, with this layout so like a 12 square maybe do like a, a, a simple border in between every one. So I was thinking I'm going to do basically like a rectangle layout piece. But then I keep looking at these and I do think they're really cute individual. They've got this really cool like rustic folky look to them. And I like the display and everything. I'm just not quite sure like how I would have to find something to like display all 12 smalls and I just keep waffling. Like I, I really do like the individual ornament look, um, but I would want to display them all together and not like just put one out every month. And so I would have to figure out a display for all 12. Um, so do you guys think I should just do them all in one piece as like 12 or do you think I should do them individual and make them into cute little ornaments and then I have to find some kind of like shadow box or something like that? Let me know. Let me know what you think. And again, we're doing it on this like rusty crusty fabric. Okay, that's all I got. I'm going to go get some coffee. It's my favorite part of the day. About two or three o'clock, I get a I I get coffee every day, so um, that's what I'm gonna do now. So yeah, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Maybe next video we'll be out of the car finally. We'll see. I want to show you guys my quilts, so I want to get out of the car because I'm not bringing my quilts in the car. Um, I haven't finished any more from last. I I had finished one that I couldn't show you last time, so I've still got it on my list to like show you guys eventually at some point. Um, but um, I'm about halfway done with another quilt. So maybe next video I'll have a quilt to show you guys. It's going to be, it's real cute. I can't wait to show you. So I'm still quilting, um, but I've been stitching a lot. That's the other thing I was going to tell you. I definitely like my stitching was suffering a little bit because I'm super into quilting. I'm still really into quilting. But Mania, and in particular this Fabulous Women project, has super re-energized my stitchy bug. And um, I've been stitching like crazy. And I didn't even, there were some, several days in a row I didn't even go down to the quilt, um, to the basement to quilt. Because I just wanted to stitch. That's all I wanted to do. And isn't that like a beautiful, beautiful, lovely feeling? Because that's why we're all here, right? You guys like my other crafts, you like my quilting and whatever, and that's great. But like ultimately you're here for the cross stitch, right? So I'm super into cross stitch right now. Yes. Um, so that doesn't, there's no point to that really. I just want to let you guys know. So, all right, I'm going home. I'll see you guys next time.